So JavaScript is considered to be an object-oriented programming language uh, in the sense that you can create objects to solve your programming problems. If you're trying to solve a problem, what you would do is, uh, if you're doing the object-oriented approach, you can create objects which represent your entities, your things in the system, and you can add logic so that uh, they become behaviors of objects and you can have objects interacting with other objects to solve your computing problem. That is one way in which you can write code in JavaScript. Um, let's take an example of um, an employee management system. I know it's cliche, but uh, I think that's something that everybody understands. So let's start with uh, how you would design an employee management system. You would have objects for employees, you would have probably objects for managers, and uh, some kind of a method which identifies if a person reports to a particular manager or not. So you're essentially looking at objects and behavior, right? That's all there is to object-oriented programming. Okay, so let me start by creating a simple employee object. I'm going to call this EMP1. I'm going to make it an empty object to start with and now I'm going to add properties to it. So let's say I have like four properties I need to add. One is the first name, the last name, the gender and the designation of the employee. So let's start by populating those stuff. So EMP1 is my object. So I'm going to do emp name, which is going to create the property first name on the object and it's going to assign the value which is the string Michael. Now I'm going to add other properties. Uh, similarly, I'm going to have emp1.lastName, the gender, and the designation. So with these property assignments, I now have an object assigned to emp1, and it is going to contain these four properties, first name, last name, gender, and designation. Now this is something that I would need to repeat for every employee in the system, right? So let's say I want to create another employee. I would need to do the exact same thing mp2, initialize it to an empty object, and then again set the first name, the last name, the gender, and the designation. So this has to keep repeating for each and every employee in the system. And you can see right away that this can get tedious. If you have like 100 employees in your company, you need to do this 100 times. And uh, you need to be really careful because let's say you miss one line, right? So you're basically skipping a property of an employee object, which could cause problems later. So you need to make sure that this assignment of all these properties is foolproof. You need to make sure that it doesn't fail. Um, when you have things like this, which you need to repeat multiple times, then you don't want to repeat the code multiple times. What you would prefer to do is to write it once and then use it in multiple places. And JavaScript has just the right structure for it, which is a function. Whenever you have a piece of code that needs to be repeated multiple times from multiple data, you just create a function and pass the data as arguments. So let's say I create this function called create employee object. So the, the, the purpose of this function is to create employee objects like this, basically what we are doing over here. Okay, so let's say I copy over this code and add it as a function over here. So let's say I'm going to paste this code. Uh, I'm going to call this return, or maybe I'm going to call this new object. It is going to be this empty object. I'm going to say new object dot first name. Everywhere I'm replacing the object with new object and then in the end I need to return this object so I'm going to say return new object now this is going to create now this function create employee object is always going to create just one employee object because the values are hard-coded I want to make this dynamic so I can accept these as arguments so let's say I accept a list of arguments here which is the first name last name gender and the designation. Now that we have this, I can replace this string, hard-coded string, with the first name that I am accepting from the method argument. So let me go ahead and replace all this other stuff with method arguments. Go. Now we have a function which accepts four arguments, which are the properties of your newly created object, the object that you want to create, and now this function is going to do this job, right? So rather than repeating these lines multiple times, you just call this function with the values that you need. So let me create a third employee object, var emp3, and I'm going to use this 
function now. All right, so I'm going to say create employee object. I need to pass in the four arguments. And let's say I pass this. And now EMP3 is a new employee. It's a new object, which behaves exactly like EMP1 and EMP2. They have the same properties, but now with the values that you need. Now, you don't really need to repeat all this stuff every time. You just call this function, and then now you have something which creates objects for you. Okay, now if I were to put this code on the scratch pad and uh, run this, now I'm going to have three objects. EMP1 is an object. EMP2 is another object, which was created manually by writing all these lines manually. But now if I look at EMP3, you can see that it's a similar object, but now we have called this function in order to create it. So we didn't have to manually repeat this. All right, so this is one way which we can create objects without having to duplicate code.